I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to make a curved or rounded spine. Uh, I'm going to show you different sizes and then the different or the deeper radiuses. I'm going to show you how to do that here. So I have here a binders board that I get from the art store. Um, some of you may have the Hobby Lobby book board. And so it doesn't matter what you're using, you can use either or. Um, I like the binders board. Uh, you do have to buy more quantity at once. It's like 20 bucks, but it is half the price um, overall and better quality than the book board at Hobby Lobby. So what you're going to need is some water, and then you're going to need your book board or your binders board. And so what I'm going to do is I would take my piece, this one's already wet because this is like my fifth take on the video here. I'm just going to dip it into the water. You can also run it under uh, your faucet and it really is just a few seconds is all it needs. And then you're going to find something that is curved. Um, I'm going to use this book. It's a box, a storage box. I have larger ones. I have really big ones of these that I got at Michael's too that work great uh, for making the more shallow spine. However, I'll show you something else that I use that I like better. Just depends on what you have around. So all I'm going to do is take my binders board and I'm going to put it on my curved item that I've chosen and press it down. And then I'm going to use tooling. I like the tooling because it's netted. It allows the air to evaporate so it dries quicker. And then I like how wide it is also. And I can go over half my spine and pull it down right to the shape of the, this box. Um, it's all completely pressed down the way I want it to be shaped, but I am going to wrap it. So I'll just wrap the whole thing and let it dry for 24 hours. Um, if you're going to use fabric, uh, you can do that. Uh, it might take a little longer to dry. Um, if you're going to you know, wrap it with something that's not so wide and it's thin, uh, just make sure you're not pulling it too hard. You, you do want it to flatten, but if you pull it too hard, you're going to start putting lines uh, in the side here of your spine. So just don't pull it too tight if you're using something that's thin, is what I'm trying to say. And then the other thing, since I have this wet here, I'm going to show you the difference between the binders board uh, and the book board from Hobby Lobby. That's this color. Um, the book board is all one layer all the way through when it's constructed, and it has a grain to it. So if you cut it uh, against the grain, it's going to be firmer. Um, this book board here is peeling apart, and it has so many layers to it. So you can see the different layers that I'm pulling apart. Where the book board, um, it's just one, it's one solid layer all the way through. No matter which one you use, um, when you glue the whole thing, put your fabric on, it can start to warp. And you put a book on it, once the glue is dry, it's no longer warped and it's sealed, so you're good to go. Um, I don't really have problems either way with that. I always lay a book on my covers when they're drying if I have fabric. So that is one way to curve uh, the spine there. And I'm going to show you some other, other ways. So I will also um, use my rolling pins. Um, I work with fondant for cakes, uh, not lately because it's not fun. Um, and I also do custom cookies. So. I have these, and if you use the rolling pin, uh, because it's a smaller circle, um, you are going to get a deeper radius. So the rule is, no matter what you're using, is the larger cylinder you're using, the softer the curve. And I'll show you that with one of the other items I'm going to show you. So for my favorite one, um, which this one's doubled up. Um, it's just the soft curve. I'm going to show you what I use for that. This is single. This is doubled. 
Um, I use this big 8 inch diameter tube um, that I got at Home Depot. It's a concrete tube. It was like $10.95 and it works great. So I wet my book board, binders board, and I press it up against here. And again, I'll wrap it with my tooling. And it's nice to have this edge here to line up the top um, of your spine uh, so you know that your spine is straight. If you were to do it down here and kind of turn it a little, you're going to have a warped spine. So line it up to the top of whatever it is you're using so you know that it's going to be, you're going to end up with your book having square results. Um, you can also use uh, shipping tubes. Um, I used a shipping tube for my first two books and from there um, I've just been doing this curved spine um, and flat spines and then I have a run of specialty spines. And I'm going to show you uh, all these journals here and the different spines at the end of the video. Uh, but this one here is with the shipping tube and I did the five bands, left a space here to do some texture paste, a raised design. Um, but with the deeper ones, what you're going to find is if I were to mount these pages into the curve here, I'm also going to have a curve here. And I'll show you that with this book. This book has curved uh, pages at the spine, and you can see the pages here have followed. So if you go really deep, you might not want your pages to be mounted right into the spine itself. Um, if it's not so deep, you can disguise that with lace and such. But here I've mounted it to a flat book board and then mounted that into my spine. And that allowed me some space in my spine where it's um, hollow. And in there I put this little uh, drawstring sack. You can put your little treasures in there, grandma's jewelry or whatever uh, you are keepsaking. Uh, you can use the streamers or the drawstrings for um, a little tassel hanging off with some charms. Uh, you can also pull them forward into your pages and use them, uh, make them longer and use them for bookmarks to come all the way through your, your pages. So a couple options with that. Um, but again, I just mounted them to a piece of bookboard and I set that into my shipping tube. So I was left with that space there. And so this is my beach journal that I did. This is the second book that I ever did. Um, this is probably about nine months old and it's just not done. It's been sitting here and I just don't have any interest right now in finishing that one yet. And so then um, I have, this is a softer curve that I did on that big yellow tube that I showed you. Uh, it's a double layer of this binders board and the spine is perfectly smooth. That's how they turn out. And then I have the five bands here. I put three at the bottom, two at the top. I'm not going to do anything in this area um, like I am the beach journal that I just showed. This one is full of antique lace. Uh, there's 18, I'm sorry, there's 18 feet of lace in the book. And the tassel here is 22 and a half feet of lace. Uh, it's all French antique lace. It's kind of cute. And then I just tucked some items under the cover here, and I did the pink seam binding um, here and here for my closure because she's got the little pink uh, roses under her hat and on her dress. And so this one I'm, I've been currently working on and finishing the cover, um, but I'm not done with this one yet either. And then I'll just show you some of the lace on the inside here. So a lot of the pages are trimmed out with antique lace. A few pieces of sari silk. Um, on the inside of this one, I have done my signature block with one large piece of fabric that runs from the back cover all the way to my front cover. Uh, so I have no fabric seam from here to here. So it wasn't that fun sewing the signatures onto it when the fabric was flipping around. Um, but you can see the nice clean indentation here um, and here at my hinge area. 
and then on the outside of my book as well. So that one I'm working on. And this has like a leather, a leather suede type feel to it, the fabric does. And I was surprised that it works so well over the bands on my book. It has this pretty design on it. And you can see on the bands uh, where it ends here, how smooth that it wrapped over. And there are tricks to that. And depending on if you're covering it with fabric, just to have the fabric on there, or if you're painting it, uh, there's a different uh, way to get that nice finished flat look there. And so this one here is a specialty spine, is what I call, I have quite a few of these that I'm doing. Um, not ready to show those yet, uh, but this is a Tim Holtz fabric, it's called Bouquet. And then the, the spine kind of looks like a trellis, and so this has a lot of writing paper in it. I think it's about 220 pages, and it's mostly for writing, so everything I'm embellishing on the pages is flat, there's no bulk. Here's the tassel on that one. Now the sari silks match the cover. And if you're going to show anyone the technique with curving the spine, I would appreciate it if you would tell them where you learned it from. That's if you're teaching how to do it. If you're showing your books, uh, that's a little bit different. But if you're actually teaching um, how to do it, please send them over to my Instagram page, Vintage Journal Studio, or my YouTube channel. Um, this one here is a flat spine. Uh, the five bands I've actually spaced evenly on this one, and this one is covered in muslin fabric, and it's painted. And so again, where it tucks over the bands, you get the puckering. Um, and so if I'm going to be painting uh, my spine, what I'll do is I'll file that gently right at the band area if I get any puckering, um, and that just smooths it right down. And so this one I just kind of wanted to be light with the weathered look. I also had kind of coffee dyed the the muslin before I put it on. And this one has a pretty tassel too that matches the cover. Um, this one is a little bit different. Um, like I said, I have four ways to mount each spine that I do and that depends on how I want this hinged area to look. And so with this one um, here, I have my two covers that are a separate piece from my spine. The inside I just, I did the fabric, the matching fabric in between my signatures uh, that match the cover. And then just did the papers as my cover pages. Uh, but my spine was a separate piece uh, before I mounted it to my covers. And the reason I do that I'll do this sometimes is because if I were to lay my outside fabric over this entire area, I have, I'm limited as to what I get design-wise on each piece. So um, I will just do my cover, my front cover, I'll do my back cover, and then I'll do my spine with the fabric or if I'm going to paint it. However, I just do three separate pieces, that way I get the layout of the, the pattern how I want it on each cover. And so that'll be one of the reasons why I do a separate piece. The other reason is I just want it to be a different color or I want it painted. So that one is a different application. This one I'm still putting tabs on. Actually all of them still need to be tabbed. Put a few tabs on this one. Um, I always like to do a little lace butterfly tab. Uh, that's on a paper clip uh, like that. And then I'll do a little bow tie tab. I think I got a bow tie on this one. Uh, there's a little bow tie tab there that matches the fabric on the front. And then I have a matching. I still got a tab along. So none of these are completely done. And I'm still working on them. And then there's this flat spine here. Um, this is the best basic beginner one that I can recommend. These are all single layers. And you can double your layers for your covers. But I think it actually makes your book uh, have more, it's heavy, it just feels more quality um, when you're holding it. So this is probably the simplest. Just put all your fabric on. And I don't remember if I mentioned about putting the fabric on. 
when I put my fabric on, I put my fabric on the outside of everything first and shape it and form it the way I want it to be shaped and um, apply my hinge area the way I want. And then when that's dry, I will go in, I don't know why I'm flipping those around, that was smart, on the inside. Then I will put my supporting materials in here to support what I've done on the outside of the book. If I do the inside first, and I put my book over to do the outside of the material, um, there's no really room for moving anything around or doing anything um, to shape it how I want it to shape it. So I do the outside first, get it exactly how I want it shaped, especially if I have my bands um, or whatever it is I'm doing, I'm designing on the spine, and then I go to the inside and do my supporting area in the hinge area to support what I just did on the outside. So, I don't know if there's anything else that I forgot, but there usually is something once I shut the video off. So like I said, if you're showing anybody how to do this or doing a video of it, showing people how to do it, please send them over to my channel and let them know where you learned it from. If you're just showing a book where you use the technique, I don't, that doesn't bother me. But if you learned it from me, um, please send people over to my Instagram, the Journal Studio. Uh, or to my YouTube channel. I'm also going to be working on a Facebook page uh, just to throw out ideas to you guys. And if you need help or any questions, um, let me know. Thanks for watching.